Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to my channel. We are on Campaign of France, one of the mods that you can download. It's a mod map uh, that's available in the Mod Hub for both console and PC users. Uh, all the tractors and mods that you see that I'm using today are available on the Mod Hub in-game, so you don't have to go to any external websites to get them. They're all mods that are in-game. Uh, so what we have today is we're going to take a look at field management. Now, in the last video, I showed you how to, like, basically... Basically what the main equipment of each farm does, what the tractor does, what the harvester does. Uh, tonight we're going to talk about getting fields planted and ready and harvested. So we have a perfect field back here. I got my field number one. And if we take a look at this field, it looks like it's been cultivated. Everything's good, right? But if I go stand on the field, you can see in the bottom right corner is a little gauge that says field info. This field is owned by me. It has no weeds. It has not been fertilized. It needs plowing and lime. And I apologize, it's spring. I have my windows open. You may hear birds tweeting in the background very loudly because it's mating season. All right, so um, so that is our field here, and it needs a lot of love. It's, it's basically destitute. So we are going to go ahead and get this taken care of. Uh, I am going to have to rent some equipment from the shop because I don't want to just... Um, use what I have. I've bought specific equipment for this farm and I'll show you that also, but I want to just show you the field care. So the first thing we need to do is plow this field. Let's go ahead and get that done. Uh, I'm going to go to the store and run a plow and I'll be right back. Okay, we've arrived at the shop and I my cruddy little tractor can either pull the Salford, which this is a one-way plow. Uh, we'll skip that. I'm looking in the mod plows right now. I've got this Opal 1104. It's a four bottom plow. We're going to go ahead and lease this. Wow, that's expensive. Man. All right, but we're going to lease it. Not too bad. 600 bucks to lease. And we'll go ahead and grab the plow. Now, once again, if you if you followed my last video where I talked about just the basics of equipment, um, you'll know that there is a subsoiler. Uh, right now we're using a plow. There's several different ways to do this. You'll also know that um, you only need to plow after you plant corn, uh, sunflowers, potatoes, sugar beets, and I believe sugar cane. There's five crops that need to be plowed. Every time you plant those crops, you need to plow the field when you're done. So once the crop is grown and you've harvested it, you will need to plow after each one. So if you're planning on doing any of those crops, a culti plow or a plow is a good idea. Actually, if it's a smaller setup, I would say a culti plow and, or a subsoiler, as the game calls them. This is just a regular bottom four bottom plow. Um, if you're curious to what a subsoiler is, a subsoiler, and I have one at my farm, not only cultivates or not only plows, but it also cultivates in one path. So if you're growing a lot of corn or whatever, that requires plowing, you just use the culti plow and it'll plow and cultivate at the same time. But I want to demonstrate for you how the plow works. Now, if you're doing a field, like let's say you buy a new field for one of your neighboring farmers and it needs plowing and you plow it, but you're planning on doing wheat. Well, once you've done one round of wheat, you don't ever have to um, plow again because wheat, barley, canola, soybean, um, oats, None of those crops require that you plow after you're done. So you only have to plow, once again, after sunflower, corn, uh, sugar beet, potato, or any kind of heavy root crop. Uh, those are the ones where you have to have to plow. So, um, But we're going to go ahead and do this because this field needs plowing. So that's, once again, you just check the easiest way to know. If, you, if you're confused about what fields need what, you just walk onto the field, and it'll tell you, once again, like we saw, like, hey, I need to be plowed. So once again, we'll hop onto this field. And you can see it says right there, needs plowing. Another tool that we have if we go into our map, you can see here, if I go to the different stages here, it says fruit types over on the right, I can click on that. And it shows us that uh, this field has been cultivated, but we need to plow it anyway, so it's got to be redone. And we need plowing. So we're gonna go ahead, and you can see it's red, that means that field needs to be plowed. So we're gonna go ahead and plow this field. Now, this is a uh, bi-directional plow. Uh, it goes two directions. And, you I, you know, I like these plows because you can 
um, kind of push the stuff away to the to the edges of the field. It's a little bit more realistic in its operation. Hmm. On some maps, the textures follow the plow. On others, they don't. This is one of those that they don't. Now, if I want to continue on this end, what we would do is we'd flip, in real life, you'd flip the plow. Basically, you're always going to be pushing the dirt, this dirt from here, from the center over to the left. And then you can rotate that. The next year, you can push everything to the center. Um, let's see how my, I'm, ha I'm keeping the bottoms facing the same direction. No, I don't have COVID-19. It's allergy season. Um, so, once again, I turn the plow over, and I'm going to continue doing this, and then I'll, I'll get the other side of the field doing the same thing, but going the opposite direction. Once again, from the center of the field, we're keeping the... And once again, it doesn't really matter. Well, I'm just having fun simulating. You can plow it however you want. If you just want to run back up and down the field and do it all messy and not care what you're doing, the game doesn't care. <laughs> just because I'm kind of a... In, uh, a bit of an anal fool when it comes to how I do my farming. It doesn't mean you have to do it realistically. You can do it whatever way you want. That's the great thing about this game. And I try to um, make sure I make that clear that what I'm, I'm trying to show you guys ways of doing field care. You don't have to do it my way. There's several different ways you can do it. You could, heck, you could even go into the menu and turn some of this stuff off. If you don't ever want to plow, there's a switch in the menu where you just click it off and you'll never have to plow again. Uh, if you don't want weeds, there's a switch where you can turn the weeds off. If you don't want the crops to get destroyed when you run over them with your tractor, you can turn that off too. You can turn fertilizing off. Uh, all the things that we're going to cover in the video today, you pretty much can can almost shut off or at least turn way down so it's much easier. Um, so I am I'm just trying to point out that if you want to simulate, and that's, you know, once again, farm sim is a simulator. If you want to do it a little bit more realistically... I'm trying to show you the ways to do that, uh, but you don't have to do it. I have people that say that all the time. I have a the same video for 17, and people come on there and they're like, "Well, can't you just turn that all off?" I'm like, "Well, yeah, but you know, that's like getting you know f you know like a uh, a heavy duty racing sim like a set of Corsa and then turning all the cheats on. You know, it's like, well, don't you want to really learn, like drive it like a real car drives, or are you just getting this to? You might as well just get Forza if you want to, you know, a racing game. Hook that. Plug that Xbox controller back in, friend. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go ahead and get this field plowed. I'll be back in just a moment. All right, we've completed our plowing action. Um, now the field needs to be cultivated, So, but we need to put lime in. What you want to do is, uh, once again, if we check the field now, whoops, um, the, stat <laughs> the status is that it needs lime. So we'll do that next. You always want to put lime down before you cultivate in real life. Um, now... It's a game again. If you have a cedar that cultivates, like, let's take a look here. Wrong button. Um, this um, this cedar cultivates as you go. So, not this one doesn't, but this one does. You could put lime down and then run this. In real life, I think they would cultivate the, cultivate it in first and then run one of these, but. However you want to do it, you can do it. Um, but our next stage is cultivation. Now, if you have a plowed field, you could run one of these cedars. Or even this one. Because the way the game sees the field, it sees it as plowed slash quote-unquote cultivated. You can plant directly to a plowed field. In real life, you would never do that. You would always cultivate first. Um, the cedars can't really handle plowed terrain. It needs to be flattened out first even if they cultivate. Um, so what these cedars are good for is if you have a field like, let's say, uh, let's run back here for a second. Uh, and you've gone over to wheat or soybean, and basically you have old crop on the field, but the field does not need to be plowed. You can use one of those cedars, and it'll just cultivate, rip out the old crop, and put the new crop down. Much easier to use. Um, so I recommend those kind of cedars, but in this case... Um, we had to plow, so 
Now we need to use a cultivator. <laughs> Oops. So I'm going to use, uh, we have several different cultivator types in the shop. Uh, we have a power harrow. And basically what a power harrow does, these are not in the right category, by the way. Oh, yeah, they are. I'm sorry. They are. Um, this has powered tines along the bottom. You can see there that silver part of this blue one. These tines actually spin and tear up clumps of dirt. So that's one type. Um, depends on the soil that you have. Different farmers will use different cultivators. Um, you have a basically like a... This is what most farmers, I think, in the U.S. use. They're, they're like a ripping plow um, or cultivator. This will make nice ridges in the ground, but it'll also kind of break up the soil just by using these hooks, tines. Um, and then it compacts the soil using the wheels on the back. These all have that. Um, even these little ones have, if we go in here, you can see it's got, you know, a roller in the back that will kind of flatten the dirt out once we've passed over. We have tines, discs, and then the roller. Um, this is probably what I would say a standard cultivator. Then we have disc harrows. Um, basically, they just disc and then flatten. Once again, we have the flatteners back here. And you can see they kind of prepare the soil for seeding. You make nice ridges here, but that's what they look like. And it's got two rows of discs. It's up to you what you want to use as far as a cultivator. Now, I'm going to use kind of a, I don't want to rent anything more because this is my actual personal farm. I own a subsoiler. Now, the subsoilers cultivate and plow in the same thing, but right now we're going to use them for their cultivating action. So the first thing we're going to do is we're not going to cultivate. We're going to put down some lime. Um, so let's go ahead and I need to go to the garage and return this. If you have any questions about what I'm doing, please feel free to ask them. I do my best to answer comments. Uh, we're going to return the plow because we don't need it anymore. Um, and we're going to go ahead and grab that. Um, I have a spreader that I'm going to use to spread lime onto the field. So we're going to go ahead and grab that, and I'll show you how to do that. So I am in the menu, and we're going to go to our fertilizer technology. These are the kind of fertilizers here that will allow us to spread lime. Some of them do, some of them don't. So here we have this axis. And this does not allow us to spread lime. You can see down here, it shows us what it does and what it doesn't do. And this only does fertilizer. This guy does fertilizer and lime, but it's really expensive. Once again, fertilizer and lime. These are kind of overkill for our farm. But I have this mod that I downloaded. And there's a couple mods in here. We have uh, this guy, the grass roll. This is really small. <laughs> but it's a good price. I mean, look, it's 850 bucks. I mean... But this one does not do lime. However, this guy, which is a little bit more expensive, the Agro Maddox, this looks like it's a good fit for our little farm. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and buy this. But whatever works for you, you can even just lease this if you want. But I also need to be able to fertilize. So I wanted to put this down um, with lime and fertilizer. So I need to buy this. So we're going to go ahead and buy that for my farm. And we can pick different wheels. I'm going to pick the bigger wheels because that looks nicer. And we're just going to buy this. There we go. So let's go. I'm going to go pick it up from the shop. I'll be right back. Now, I've done something a little unethical. <laughs> I have a, uh, a mod on my farm that's available in-game, once again, that allows me to buy lime directly. But if you don't have that mod, uh, every map has lime stations on it. You can also buy, if you go into the shop, here's the shop, and I go into the box, and I go into big bags, I can also buy lime this way. Each one of these has 2,000 lime. That's double what I need in my spreader but you can buy lime that way but i have a once again a mod where i can load up uh lime and, and all the things that i need right here so here i'm gonna put lime in there ta-da and we're going to take this line back to our field and spread it. Whoa. Nice driving. So let's go ahead and put this down on the field. And you can see how easy this is. This That one, because it's such a small field, we should be able to cover the whole field with that, that line. Let's go ahead and get the operation started. Um, see how wide that is? So this should be able to cover the field very easily, very quickly. Uh, now, I'm probably going to lime all my fields... Um, with this spreader. Look how fast it goes through the lime, though. We're already, we've already used a quarter of it. Now, fertilizer doesn't go as fast, 
Fertilizer is also a lot more expensive. Uh, thankfully, lime is cheap, but uh, we want to cover as much of the field as possible. Uh, once again, doing these things, you don't have to plow, you don't have to lime, but you lose crop yield. So liming, I think, gives you 25% more crop. That's a pretty big number. I mean, if you're if you're getting, let's say, a hundred uh, a thousand liters of corn off a field, you can actually have a thousand two hundred and fifty if you're gonna if you're gonna put lime down. So it is important to lime. Um, there we go. So that whole field's done very quickly. That's the nice thing about this spreader; it gets things done fast. Um, let's go ahead and put this away. Now, <clears throat> there's all kinds of ways you can fertilize your field we're not going to worry about that yet though let's go ahead and put down our um, cultivator so i'm going to drop this off here and we're going to i'm going to hold the right bumper down and press y and that will uh put the lime in a nice packet there and we're just going to put this actually i'm going to leave the fertilizer out because we're probably going to need it again to fertilize our fields so that field has now been limed so now we're going to grab this cultivator. Once again, I'm using a subsoiler, so this cultivates and plows, but we're just using the cultivation portion of it right now. You could also use any of those other cultivators that I showed you. Just make sure that you match up horsepower. You don't want to get a cultivator that's too big for your tractor. In this case, they're almost all too big for this tractor. This only has 120 some odd horsepower. It's a little farm and a little tractor. So now I'm going to cultivate this in, and you can see it, it buries the lime, which is good. You want the lime to get cultivated down into the soil. You can see back there I've been bailing. <laughs> if you plant wheat barley or oats you will get straw from your harvester uh, or you can get straw from your harvester you can then bale that straw and store it for your animals you could also just uh, cultivate it under if you don't want it uh, but if you're doing animals you do need straw you could also bale it and sell it I would recommend not just destroying it but using you know a baler or if you can't afford that maybe a loading wagon um, to collect it uh, the game has a, a category called loading wagons you can run around the field with the loading wagon and collect the straw and then sell it um, uh, usually these uh, maps have a uh, sell point for straw and you can do that hey I'll show you this too while we're here this that reminds me if you go to your market page you can slide over and see the different places that buy different things so right now you can see if we have wheat we have two different places that buy it. We have L'Art du Pain, which is a bread store. And we have the Cooperative Agricole, which is the ag agricultural co-op, obviously. Uh, we have two different prices. I would go right now to the, the uh, co-op to sell because it's got a higher price. You can compare them right there. Uh, in fact, it looks like they're higher on all of them. Hmm, why would you even ever take it to L'Art du Pain? Um... Here you can see if we take, if we have cotton, it goes to the spinnery. Now, eggs only go to L'Art de Pain. Milk goes to L'Art de Pain. So if you have cows, you're going to take your milk to L'Art de Pain. Um, we have hay or grass, hay, and straw. And we can sell the straw at the Commerce de Bistiol the animal commerce building and what you want to do is if you see this okay i can sell my my straw and i want to sell it you put it in a loading wagon and then you double click on this now it's tagged when i go to my map oh wait stop <laughs> uh, you can see it flashing on the bottom uh left hand corner there and if i look at the big map it shows you where it is on the map see where it's flashing and you also get a nice beacon see that big green beacon there that's showing us where that building is. So you take the roads and follow your way there. Uh, you basically follow the, the green brick road. Um, but that big green beacon shows you how far away it is and where it's at. And you want to head towards that beacon. And you'll sell your, your um, whatever product you want to sell there. there. But I, 
I thought I'd show you guys that because I know if you're new to the game, you probably don't know that you can click on those and actually make it show up on your map. Um, makes it a little bit easier to find things in the game. So we have done a nice around the outside type thing. I'm going to do one more pass here and then we'll we'll start uh, going back and forth and getting this all cultivated. So I will get this done and I will catch you when I'm finished cultivating. Okay, so we finished up our cultivation, and you can see here, if you stand on the field, it says, it's owned by me, it's fertilized zero, and there's no weeds. <laughs> well, that's good. Uh, now, the weed thing, I don't know if we'll get to cover that or not in this video. Basically, sometimes the weeds grow, sometimes they don't. Um, if you do have weeds grow, though, you can use a sprayer, and I'll show you in the menu. There's two ways to kill weeds. If you catch the weeds in their first stage of growth you can use a weeder. Any of these will do. Obviously, the Borgo one is probably going to be a little large uh, for your taste because that's huge, but it, it, the principle is the same. Um, on this farm, I'd probably either use the, pneumo, the pneumatic star to weed or um, this guy. This is actually not a bad price. I might buy one of these. Uh, you don't have to use these, though. Uh, honestly, if you don't want to spend the money, the other thing that you can do is you're going to need a sprayer to fertilize your fields. Um, you have the spreader that I have. I showed you that that's this orange dude, but you're also going to need a sprayer. Um, or I guess you don't need a sprayer, but it's a good idea to have a sprayer. Now the sprayer is dual purpose with these sprayers. You can put down fertilizer, a second layer, cause you're going to need two coats of for every field's going to need two fertilization stages unless you turn that off. So by default, you have to put down two of applications of fertilizer. Um, I use this little guy. You could also use this Hunipper. That's pretty cool, actually. I might do this. I might try this this time. How wide is that? Uh, eight meters versus twelve. This is wider, but this is this carries more. Anyway, um, you can put down both fertilizer and weed killer. So if you see the weeds pop, you could let them grow until they flower and then spray, or you could whatever stage you catch them in, you can spray them, and that's why I like the sprayer. If you use a weeder, you have to catch the weeds in their first stage of growth. So if you go to bed and wake up the next morning and they're in their second stage of growth, you can't use this anymore. You have to use a sprayer. However, the nice thing about the weeder is that it doesn't take any kind of liquid or anything. So you don't have to pay for weed killer. You basically just have, it just kills the weeds. There's no material you use. So every time you use it, you're not, you know, buying uh, um, herbicide, but with the sprayer, you have to buy herbicide. But I just wanted to cover that because I don't know that we are going to run into that um, with this this map. We may or may not get weeds. It all depends. Some Sometimes you get weeds, sometimes you don't. Uh, but I would recommend this tank if you're going to do it. Let's go ahead and buy this. I'm going to buy the Uniper. It's probably a little bit more expensive and a little bit narrower, but... It holds more. So anyway, uh, we'll, I'll show you that a little bit later on. But the first thing we need to do now is we need to plant this field. So we're going to go ahead and grab the cedar. And I'm going to plant, um, let's put down some, let's take a look and see what I have in stock. Uh, I want to grow more of that if I do. So we have 13,000 liters of barley, 12,000 liters of oats, um, I think I'm going to sell off uh, barley. So I'm going to grow barley on this field. And when that's done, we'll sell all of it. Uh, we have no wheat left. So we'll do barley. So let's go ahead and drive back and put our cultivator away. And for now, I'm just going to set the cultivator here because what's going to happen is um, it goes in front of the cedar. So... We'll grab our little tiny cedar. <laughs> this thing, I love this small farm thing, but the cedars are really tiny. <laughs> so now this cedar does not fertilize when it plants. It only plants. So we have to uh, make sure that we um, fertilize after we're done planting. So we're going to put seeds in it. Right now it's set for wheat, but I want barley. So I'm going to close it up, pull forward, and I'm going to left bumper and Y and that selects barley we can see you can see all the different crops that this will do you'll notice that I this does not do corn or sunflower 
Um, that's the difference between a cedar and a planter. A cedar can do um, wheat, barley, oats, and a planter does sunflower and corn. Once again, if you do corn or sunflower, you're going to have to uh, plow each time. So I would suggest buying what I have right there. And the reason why I bought that is because I'm going to do pigs on this farm, and I have to grow corn to do pigs. So that is going to be my plow and my cultivator. That's why I bought a culti plow for this farm. So once again, if you want to learn how to care for your animals, I do have guides. I haven't done a pig guide yet. I'll probably do that next because I know people are going to want to know how to take care of your pigs. It's pretty complicated, but it's also easy. Pigs require several different kinds of crops, uh, and they do need straw. But they do make good money because they reproduce very quickly. So after a couple days, if you have 50 pigs, in a couple days you'll have 100 pigs, and that's about... Uh, I'm going to say 2000 at about 2000 a pig or 1500 a pig. You make about $100,000. I'm sorry, uh about 10,000 bucks, 15,000 bucks every 2 days. It's not bad money for a small farm. Maybe more even. Let me think about this. 10 pigs are going to be about $15,000. So if you make 50 pigs, <laughs> And my math skills, I don't do math very well. Uh, 50,000, 15,000 times. Don't forget it. I'm going to finish seeding this field. I'll catch you guys when I'm done. <laughs> have, have fun in the one second it takes to go from this part of the video to the next. So once again, if you are looking for advanced information, I do have a pretty thick playlist of FS19 tutorials. Um, I have tutorials on hay and straw and how to make them. I have tutorials on how to feed your sheep, how to feed your cows, how to feed your horses. Uh, I have not done a tutorial, like I said, on pigs yet, but I will do that. Um, but I also have, you know, tutorials on um, pretty much all, like how to start your farm, like what equipment to pick, what equipment you're gonna need. Um, so I would definitely recommend checking out that playlist. Uh, I'll put the playlist link in the description, um, but I think you'll find everything you need for this game in that playlist aside from these basic things, and, and I'm putting all of those in there now. Um, I usually wait until the game has been around for a while because what happens is uh, the people that are diehard Farm Sim fans will buy the game when it's brand new. The first year is all people buying it that have already played Farm Sim because they love the game, they want the newest version. After that, though, the game goes on sale, and right now we're in that phase where people are getting the game for 20 bucks, 15 bucks. They buy it on a sale. They get it free in the Xbox store or the PlayStation store or whatever, uh, and they're like, what do I do now? And so these videos that I'm making right now are for you guys. Uh, you've never played a farm sim game before. This is the first time you've played it, and you're like, oh, my God, there's so much to do. Uh, and once again, I want to reiterate that just because I do something some way doesn't mean that you have to. Uh, this is a very open-ended game. One of the things I love about Farm Sim is that you can do it however you want. If you want to do all animals in small fields, that's great. If you want to do giant equipment in giant fields with no animals, you want to do lumber and you just want to have a lumber farm, or you want to do just silage on a farm, or you want to do just you know, BG, feeding the BGA. I mean, however you want to do it, it's up to you. You don't have to do my methods. I'm just kind of showing you the basics of the game, so if you're feeling lost, you have some a guide here that I can kind of help you through that stuff. So um, anyway, that's what this is all about. But you can do it any way you want. You don't have to do it my way. Um, all right, so we have completed our planting. So the next thing that you notice, okay, so if we look at our status again, now we have, it's owned by us. We have barley, and it's growing. We don't have any weeds, thankfully. But we are also not fertilized. So what I would recommend is that now that we've planted this before anything grows on the field, I would put down a layer of solid fertilizer. Those are the little fertilizer pellets that we get. We're going to use our orange spreader to put that solid fertilizer down. A lot of farmers will wait till the plants have grown a little bit, but we're going to do another thing. So uh, another thing that I need to tell you, um, I just said another thing, another thing. Wow. Such a great commentator. <laughs> actually, actually, actually. Um, all right, so one of the things you need to know, if you have crop destruction on and you go on the field with these tires on, um, right now you'll be fine because the plants have not grown. If you are in the first stage of growth, you still should be fine with these big knobby tires. However, 
if you get to a stage where the plants have grown quite a bit uh, and you try to go on the field with these tires, you will kill the crop. So you have to put on narrow tires, and I'm going to show you what those narrow tires look like. Uh, we don't need them right now, but I'm going to put them on anyway so you can see them. So we pull into our shop. Uh, if you don't have a shop on your farm, you can go to the dealership, and the shop there is free. However, when you first put narrow tires on, you do have to buy them. We're going to customize this, and I'm going to put narrows on. There we go. Now, I've already purchased, uh, no, that's going to cost me $1,000, so I have to buy these tires. Customize. Yep. Okay, so now I've got my little ugly narrow tires on, but you have to use the narrow wheels if you want to protect your crops. So, once again, if you're driving on the field that has crops on it, these will keep you from destroying those crops. Yes, it's ugly, but we need to do it. So, I'm going to go ahead and grab the spreader, and we're going to spread some fertilizer onto the field. Now, you can only do one stage of fertilization per growth stage. So, uh, you'll see the field is, um, right now, has no plants on it. Until those plants pop, I can't put any more fertilizer on it than what I'm about to do. So if you've planted your crops with one of these seeders or planters that does fertilizer, and I'll show you what I'm talking about, you can see here this one just plants. This one just plants. This one puts fertilizer down and it plants. You can load it up with fertilizer and it'll fertilize as it plants. That's really nice. This is my favorite one in the game for small farms. I will buy that for this, or I will buy this unit for this particular farm eventually when I can afford it. Um, but this is a great seeder for a small farm and it cultivates, it fertilizes and it plants all in one stage. Um, uh, but that fertilizing goes down. So what happens is if I plant using this fertilizer, I can't put another stage of fertilizer down until the plants grow. So when you see the plants pop up out of the ground and they'll look like this, this is what the plants will look like on first stage of growth. If they Once they've popped out of the ground like this, you can then run the fertilizer again. But until they pop like this, you cannot run the fertilizer again. It's, 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 you'll just be throwing fertilizer away. So if you're using one of those seeders or planters that fertilizes, wait till the crops pop like this and then run your second stage. Okay, so I have arrived with my fertilizer and I'm gonna go ahead and start the fertilizer. You can see here the nice spread. And you'll notice that this does not empty very quickly. It's not like the lime where it empties out. Woo! Right away. You're wasting it. Press the wrong button. And you can see the field changes color where you're fertilizing, so that makes it a little bit easier to tell what you've done and what you haven't done. Some of these crops, they get really thick and it's hard to tell, you know, where you fertilized and where you haven't fertilized. That makes life a little bit difficult. Once again, the name of this map is Campaign of France, and it is located in the Mod Hub. Everybody has it, both console and PC users. So if you like the map, just go into your Mod Hub in the game and download it. Um, so there you go. So this field is all fertilized, and it is, you'll notice here we jump out, shows that we're growing, there's no weeds, and we're 50% fertilized. So now we have to wait for the crop to, to jump up a stage. Once again, you'll see the little plants growing. And once those plants start to grow, we can fertilize again. We can use this fertilizer or we can use our sprayer. I probably, if you want to be realistic and you want to simulate, um, you will want to spray at the next phase. You put down the solid fertilizer when the plants are very young or when they haven't grown at all. And then you put down spray once the plants have grown. So I would say the next stage is going to be spray, and we'll cover that in just a second. I'm going to go ahead and fast forward time a little bit and get that crop to pop. A bit of a bummer. This tractor does not have a three-point hitch on the front, and I'm realizing that you have to put this tank up front. <laughs> so I can't use that tank. Ugh. That sucks. <laughs> oh, well. I'll have to get the other one. I'll be back. All right, so we have seen here the, the field hasn't grown at all. Um... But we're gonna take a look over here at this field and this one needs to be um, fertilized. So I'm gonna just fertilize this field so you guys can get the idea uh, because it's the same difference. Now this one also needs lime. I probably will put lime down after I mow it. It's still growing. Once it gets grown, I'll mow the grass, I'll lime it and then let it grow again. Um, on this field though, and grass does keep, every time you mow it, it regrows. So don't worry about having to replant grass. You don't have to do it unless you really want to. 
But uh, here you can see we're 50%. If we spray it after it grows a stage, it'll be at 100%. You can see this is growing and it's at 50%. So same difference. We're just going to go ahead. This has grown, so we're going to go ahead and fertilize this field. So I'm going to grab the tractor with the sprayer. We're going to head over to our dispensary once again. All of these items are available in the shop in bio bags and or containers. In this case, if you don't have one of these, um, you can go here. Go to pallets and you have both herbicide and fertilizer available. You also have a nice seed pallet. Now be aware, when using a dispensary like this, oftentimes the mod maker will charge you a delivery fee. So buying fertilizer from this dispensary costs more money than buying it from the shop. However, it gets it right to your door. So it's up to you whether you want to do that or not, but um, that can be expensive. Uh, actually, you know what? I am going to wait. We're going to wait. I want to wait and show you what the crops look like so you can see how to spray the next stage. So we're just going to wait. Uh, give me about a minute here, and I'll get the the crop so that it's grown to the first stage. I promised, and I'm going to I'm going to follow through with my promise. Okay, so our crop has popped. Sounded weird. And we're going to go ahead and uh, spray it. You can see we're going to unfold our sprayer here. So that's what first stage growth looks like. It's cute, small, short. And we're going to go ahead and turn the sprayer on. And we'll be able to get this whole field done in about two or three passes. It should be pretty quick and easy. You can see once again from above, you can see where we've sprayed and where we haven't. Once again, I would recommend doing all the fertilizing early on in the grow stages. Once these fields start to grow heavily, it's harder to see what you've sprayed and what you haven't. So I would recommend doing this uh, early in, in your grow stages, like, like, like we've done, where we get the first stage done right after we plant. Oh, I can't see anything. And we get the second stage done pretty shortly after that. So with that first, gro first, first growth stage is what I'm trying to say here. Tongue twister. Little pecky woods. Woody pecks. I'm going to swing back here. Oh, don't get stuck. I try not to stop applicating, but <laughs> whatever. All right, so that's it. So once we're done with this spray, the crop is ready to grow. You just got to keep an eye open for weeds. If the weeds come, you're going to throw some herbicide on there and kill the weeds. But other than that, you're, the crops are just going to grow. So you just let them do their thing. And I think we've already sprayed all that. Once again, it gets a little difficult to see where we've been and where we haven't been. Um, I think I missed this corner over here, so we're going to go back and grab that. that's it we're finished spraying and so this crop is done if we step out and let it while it's folding up you can see here we are 100 percent fertilized we have no weeds and we're just going to leave it at that but we'll once again keep an eye out check every day to see if there's weeds growing um usually crops grow i think in like 26 or 30 hours so by tomorrow night this heart that should be ready to harvest maybe the next day though might be the next morning but keep an eye open just keep popping out there uh, if the crop grows all the way with weeds on it Ugh. You, the problem is you're going to end up with a uh, weeds in your crop. And then you lose, I think, 10 or 15% of growth. So try to catch the weeds if you can. But you can also just turn them off. A lot of people that I know turn them off. So, All right, guys. So we're going to do a harvest next. I'm not going to harvest my own field because I don't have any fields ready to harvest. But we'll get a mission here and we'll harvest somebody else's field for them. So you can see that process. All right, our neighbor down the road has uh, given us a harvest contract for uh, field number 32. So we're going to get out there with our bison and harvest it for them. So you guys can see that process. It's, gonna, it's not easy to get to. Hopefully we'll be able to get there without killing anybody. <laughs> this harvester is, is really small. It's the smallest harvester in the game, yet it's still huge. <laughs> Does not fit too well down these roads, but we'll get there. Uh, 
All right, I'll catch you when I get down to the field. So we've arrived at our field. If you guys have watched my last tutorial, I showed you how to open the harvesters. Well, the bison doesn't need to be open. It's one of those rare harvesters like the Neve or the Nova from um, Roslamash that does not need to be opened. So it just runs. So you turn the harvester on by holding left bumper X and we're gonna go ahead and run our first pass. Try to make it nice and straight. You can see we're putting straw out. That straw you can collect once again and sell. I would definitely do that. It's a good way to make a little bit of extra money for your farm. Each trailer load can range from $1,000 to $5,000. Hey, that's a loan payment, right? So it's worth doing. We're going to fill this harvester up with wheat. And that's the harvesting process right there. That's all there is to it. You're basically mowing the lawn. Now, when you're done doing it, it takes a little while for the straw to stop coming out the back. So just take your time. Train goes by. Uh, on this field, uh, it's a little narrow. I'm going to work my way down here. Uh, once the harvester fills up, we're going to empty it into a trailer. I'll bring my tippers down uh, with my other tractor, and we will, uh, we're going to, you know, we have to deliver this for the uh, owner of the field to the co-op, so we'll take it and sell it at the co-op. The co-op. Co you see, this harvester's having a hard time going uphill. <laughs> it's such a small harvester, but it is what it is. All right, I'm going to fill this guy up, and then we'll, I'll bring the tippers over, and I'll show you how to deliver your product to the agricultural store. This was a gulp full. This is kind of funny. The, the harvester is just full at the very end of the field. I, I thought that I'd have to empty at least twice, but it, it's not. So the next thing I do is I'm going to hold down my left bumper and push down on the direction pad, and that'll open up the pipe. And what this does is this allows you to dump... Um, the contents into your cart. Now, I haven't brought the cart over yet, so I'm going to go grab that. All right. Uh, we are coming around the corner here, up to the location where our uh, harvester is. And once again, this is a mod tractor, so you're going to go, hey, where'd you get that? Mod hub. <laughs> it's on the mod hub. Now, I don't know if console users have this tractor or not, but I'm pretty sure they do because there's nothing, no, like, fancy, weird scripts about it. Same with the tippers. Got some Russian tippers. So you just drive under the pipe and it'll unload into the trailer. And then we're going to take this trailer over to our delivery location and sell this off. And that'll be it for the harvest. Now I'm going to have to get all my equipment back to the farm. Dang it. Oh, well. This is the exciting part. <laughs> there we go. And so she's full up, and we're going to run this tractor over and run it over to the to the mill. Our delivery point's right there, so I'm not even going to bother cutting the video because we're just going right here. Let's see, is that the no entry point? Yeah, we have to go around the other way. This is telling us to go. There's a flow to this. There it is. There's the entry point. So we're going to go over here. Look at all this traffic. All right. Looks like we can sell in either of these ports. I'm going to go over to this one. That seems like it would make more sense. We're going to pull in. We're going to unload our wheat. This is all for the farmer. So the contract is finished, and we're going to go say collect. There we go. So we've finished harvesting. So you guys have seen 
everything from uh, planting to harvesting to fertilizing to caring for your fields. I don't believe we have any weeds on our field, but we'll just double check real quick. We've gone through a couple growth stages and I want to just see how it's going, but I don't I don't think anything's grown on the no, no weeds. Once again, if the weeds pop up, you can either rip them up with a weeder or you can spray them with the sprayer using herbicide um, and you'll see the weeds die. But uh, that's that's about it. So hopefully you guys found this guide useful and helpful and uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed it and had a little fun while we were doing this and that you will have a happy time farming. And now that you know how to do everything, you'll be like, hey, man, thanks. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Once again, I always do my best to try to answer all comments. Uh, I don't always get to them, but I try to get every comment that I possibly can. Um, so if you have any questions or anything, just let me know. Have a great night. Be sure to subscribe. Thumbs up, voice up, and we'll see you next time on Farming Simulator 19.